Hello everyone, this is Jason from Primetime Aquatics and today I wanted to talk a little bit about why fish die. And I wanted to start out by saying if you're somebody who's here because one of your fish died and you're trying to get answers, thank you for being here. We're very sorry that that happened. But hopefully as we go through this checklist of why fish die, you'll have a better understanding of why bad things can happen sometimes in the hobby, so stay tuned. Alright, so I want to start out with the things that are easiest for us to measure. One of which being water parameters. So first thing, temperature. Was the temperature correct for the fish that you're keeping, especially for the fish that died? We had something happen to us. We had a Lake Tang and Yikin tank, and it had some Daffodil Brichardi, some Caudal Punctata, some fish we really, really loved. And I noticed after a couple days, they really weren't eating very well. They didn't have a lot of energy. Their color looked a little bit off, and sure enough, the heater that was in the tank had crashed. The tank got all the way down into the low 60s, so it was very cold for a fish that likes to be around 80 degrees. I went out, got a new heater, came back, raised the temperature slowly over about 24 hours or so, 24, 48 hours, but it was too late. All the fish in that tank died except for two. And so first thing, check your water temperature. Make sure if you've got a heater in the tank, it's functioning properly. The second thing, if you're heating the room, don't just go by the temperature in the room. Right. One of the things that we do, we have a thermometer that monitors the temperature over 24 hours, so it will show me what the low temperature is for over that 24 hour period and the high temperature. That's really useful because if you're always going down in the fish room at the same time, it might always be 81 degrees. And you may be thinking everything is okay, but if you were to look at the way the temperature fluctuates in that room over 24 hours, what if it's getting down to 75 or 76 degrees for a large portion of that day? That's also why it's important measure the temperature within the tank, right? Whether that's a, a stick-on thermometer or you've got something that's floating or you've got an instrument that will measure the temperature. But measure that, make sure that the tank temperature is what you intend. All right, next thing when it comes to water parameters, I like to look at pH. And so there are some fish that are relatively forgiving when it comes to changes in pH, but most fish would prefer a stable pH. So for instance, African cichlids, we keep our our water right around 7.8 or 8 or actually that's what it comes out of the tap and so it's really good for African cichlids but maybe you buy some African cichlids and it turns out your water is at a five and a half or maybe a six that would be quite the shock they may not do so well in that pH on the flip side maybe you're keeping some wild caught pistols and they want a pH closer to five five and a half and your pH is around an eight you throw them in the tank they don't do so well all right so definitely take a look at the pH make sure it's relatively close to what you're looking for uh, in terms of the fish that you're keeping. The other thing that we measure are nitrogen quantities, nitrogen concentration, so ammonia, nitrite, nitrate, were those in line with what we would expect. So ammonia and nitrite pretty close to zero, or actually should be at zero, and then the nitrates, they should be around 20 parts per million. So you're definitely going to want to invest in a water testing kit. If those things are all aligned, the other thing that I would test is water hardness, both general hardness and carbonate hardness. And again, try and determine if the hardness of the water is in line with the fish that you're keeping. So if all of those things are in line, now let's start looking at the tank and its inhabitants. The fish that died, was it getting bullied? Was it up in a corner? Was it constantly hiding? Were there other fish in that tank that were constantly chasing it around, causing a lot of stress, causing it not to eat, and therefore the fish died? So take a look at your tank, make sure there's no other fish in that tank that are bullying the fish that are dying. Second thing, how's the tank set up? Are there hiding places for the fish? Maybe you've got fish that are a fish that really wanted to be out only at night, but it didn't really have a place to hide, so the light's stressing it out. It doesn't really have a place to go, and that stress winds up killing the fish. So make sure, once again, we've said this a lot, do the research before you buy the fish and make sure the habitat that you have is okay for the fish that you're keeping. All right, don't just go out, buy the fish, bring it home, and figure it out later. Okay, so we've tested the water parameters, we've looked at the other inhabitants in the tank, we've looked at the hiding places and the way things are set up, if the fish require them, they have them. The other thing I would look at is food. And so is the food that you're feeding optimal for the fish that you're keeping? So a good example, we've got some Mbuna cichlids, and if I were feeding them bloodworms two or three times a day, they would quickly die. All right, likewise, if you've got some more carnivorous fish and all you're giving them is spirulina flake, maybe that's not going to work out so well. So make sure that whatever you've got in your tank, that they can eat and easily process the food that you're feeding them. 
Okay, so now we've gotten those things out of the way, and you'll notice so far, we haven't really talked about fish disease yet, because I think what we've already talked about is gonna be easy for pretty much anyone on the fish keeping spectrum. You can measure water parameters, you can make observations about the fish that you're keeping and how they're interacting with one another, you can assess how the tank is set up, and you can look at food and compare that to what the fish actually need. When we get into fish disease, I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about the individual diseases. That is a topic or topics for other videos, right? But overall, if you're looking for disease, what we're looking for are, does a fish have any white spots on them? Looks like they've been covered with salt. Uh, are the fins in good shape or do they look like they're kind of getting eaten away like a fin rot? Is there anything external on that fish that's not supposed to be there? Are they secreting a lot of extra mucus and so therefore they look kind of white? What do the eyes look like? Are they cloudy? All of those are indica indicators of disease. Other things, are they swimming correctly? Right? What's their abdomen look like? Is it really bloated? Or are they really, really super skinny? Both of those things could also indicate disease. So again, we're not gonna go over, unfortunately, all the individual fish diseases. That's something, that's a topic for another video. But again, you're looking for signs of disease. Now, as you've gone through all these things, Look at the other fish. How are they doing? Are they exhibiting any signs of disease? Are they exhibiting any signs of stress? If they're not, and that one fish died, sometimes, unfortunately, fish have a lifespan, right? They always have a lifespan, and sometimes they just die, right? They get old. Some fish, they may live for less than a year. Some fish may live for decades. It really depends on the type of fish that you're keeping, and sometimes there's just nothing we can do about it. They've just gotten old. So if you found this useful, Share, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.